Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're excited to talk today about the eDirectory banner ad system. Um, before we get started, just some logistics. Uh, first, we will be recording the webinar and it will be posted to the eDirectory.com blog uh, within 24 hours or so. Usually by tomorrow morning, we'll have uh, a copy of it up if you want to review um, later. And second, if anybody has any questions or comments uh, during the webinar, just post them into the chat system uh, in, the, in the meeting here, and we will stop periodically uh, to answer them, as well as um, at the end of the webinar, we'll have time to answer any questions on this topic or anything else you want to ask. Um, and some introductions. So I'm James. I'm the founder of the company. And with us today, we have Emerson and Gabriel from our marketing team. Hi, guys. Hello, Hello, James. How are you? Great. Okay. And we have some next events uh, coming up uh, on the 25th, Enhancing User Experience in Online Directory. So we're going to talk about user experience. Um, we will have more webinars uh, showing up uh, in the list as well. For uh, We do one every two weeks. Um, and those will be up uh, probably by Friday on the website. So you can go to edirectory.com slash webinars um, to check the events and sign up. And for anybody new here, just some quick background on the eDirectory platform. This is the platform that we sell. It is a platform to build uh, guide style uh, websites and mobile apps, um, content management system, uh, listing-based sites, basically. It's used for all sorts of industries and purposes, uh, anything from a local guide to a yellow pages, to a niche vendor directory, um, lead gen websites, um, anything you can imagine. It is highly customizable um, without doing any coding, just through the admin section. Uh, it's a widget based layout. You can change all the colors and fonts and branding and move things around. Um, there's also native mobile apps, um, a native mobile app builder option um, where you actually build the apps. Uh, uses the same content as the website. You submit them to the App Store under your own App Store account for Google and iPhone, Android and iPhone. Um, we also have an in-house customization team if you did want to uh, do customizations beyond just the, you know, the layout editor. Um, and we can do anything from integrating with legacy systems to changing workflows, um, et cetera, with that. And we have a, a source code version available for the website for the web version as well. Uh, to learn more, you can go to edirectory.com and uh, request a live demo or talk with an account exec about, um, about your needs and see how it might fit. So today we're talking about uh, the eDirectory banner ad system. Um, these are banner ads um, in the website, uh, like this little banner here, you can see advertise your business here on the right. Um, these are typical banners. Um, it's a, it's separate from listings. Um, and uh, in this webinar today, we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of banner ads, um, the, the system features, uh, types, placement, general settings, um, some best practices uh, using external ad systems. You can actually use external banner ads with our ad system and serve them through another banner ad manager as well. Um, if you already have one set up potentially for other websites. Um, also, we have a plugin for doing geo-targeted banner ads um, as well. So why banner ads? Um, first, you know, it's an additional revenue stream just beyond selling listings on the website. Uh, so it gives you something else to sell. Um, you can do targeted advertising with them uh, to, uh, you know, sort of target banners based on, you know, topics, categories, um, et cetera. Um, also, it'll just in general increase the site value, having having banners on there makes your site look more professional, um, um, et cetera, with that. Our banner ad system um, uh, is, uh, it, it features five different industry standard types of banners. I think it's the, uh, uh, the uh, there's an association that sets the banner sizes and these are used across the internet um, and all different websites from you know, Google ad sizes to whatever, there's a set of different standards. So we pick, I think the five top used banners um, that you can lay them out using the widget editor. Um, both the site owner, um, you, you as the site owner, as well as sponsors can create banner ads um, and you can approve them of course for the sponsors. 
Um, and, and it's great for the site owner. Uh, then you can, you know, do ads on other things beyond promoting individual businesses. Um, there are flexible pricing schedules. So you don't just have to like sell a banner for a monthly, um, different, a bunch of different cycles there on how that works. Also, the banner system will work with uh, script-based ad platforms. Um, so you can put in you know, a script that might fill in a, a banner based on some criteria of another system. We'll talk a little bit about that in, in, to you as well. Also, uh, the native mobile apps um, have exclusive banners that you can just show on the mobile apps um, as well. So with that, I'll turn it over now uh, to Emerson um, to talk a little bit about more about the specifics. Hmm. And um, also, we'll give you a quick walk through the system as well. Okay, thank you, James. Uh, I believe you can see my screen now. Yes. Uh, so we have uh, five types of banners uh, in the directory. The most common is the leaderboard, uh, which has this uh, average, uh, the standard size of 728 pixels by 90 pixels. Uh, it's just the size. Uh, and you can place this banner on any page of your website. So uh, you can use it uh, for several purposes. We have the wide skyscraper uh, that can be positioned at the right of the widget. So uh, it's uh, it's a banner that uh, exists uh, inside a few widgets that we have on the system. Uh, so we're talking about the recent reviews, widget, the horizontal card. So if you are highlighting listings, feature listings, feature classifieds, feature events, etc., you can have this banner uh, along with this widgets, the browse by category or browse by location widgets also display the skyscraper banner and the results page as well. So that's where it appears. And the large mobile, which is also called a rectangle, uh, you can place this on any page. The difference is that uh, it comes in a cluster of three pieces. So uh, if you have less than three, uh, the design is not that uh, that well, but uh, you can also create your own banners to fit the spaces. But you can place it on any page. Uh, and it also is the only banner type uh, besides the, the square that can be displayed in the mobile version of the site and on the app. So it works for both the app and on the web version. The square, uh, which is uh, self-explanatory. You can uh, find its home on the right side of horizontal cards, browse by category, browse, browse by location widgets that complements the content in these uh, sections. And the sponsor links, the most common type of links that you can place these types uh, of widget on any page. They do not require image upload, so it's kind of easier for the sponsors that do not have the ability to create images. And it's also displayed in a cluster of three pieces. And the app exclusive banners. So uh, it works for both square or large mobile type of banners. Uh, on the app, it, uh, it is displayed on the explore menu on all tabs that you have available on the app. Could be listings, classifieds, events, etc. Uh, on the listing detail page, if your listing template contains these banner widgets, and it's a setting of uh, an existing banner for the square, a square or a large mobile. It's not a specific type of banner. It's just a setting inside the system. So let me pull up my test uh, website here. So I'm going to show you how to add these lots on the system. So this is my demo site. I guess I'm already logged in. So I'm going to click here to see the dashboard. Okay, here we are. So we have a few ways to add the banner slots on the website. So let's start with the page editor, which is the most simple way to, to see that. I'm going to edit the home page as we can see this uh, working. So when we go to edit the page, we have already a lot of uh, widgets here. 
so here there's one, the rectangle add bar. So this is so just- Emerson, just, I just yeah. wanted to add here, just to be clear for everybody, what we're showing you here is how to create banner zones, um, where essentially it's a, a spot on the page where different banners may be rotated. And then next, he'll show you how to actually upload individual banners. Um, so there's a separation there in terms of creating zones on the pages and then uploading individual uh, banners. Yeah, that's right, James. So to create the ad spaces on our pages, we are going to use the page editor. Just click on the plus icon to add a new space. Uh, we have the options here for the page editor. These are the three types of banners available. The other two, the square and the white skyscraper, they work inside of the widgets, uh, a few types of widgets. So the first uh, thing is to add this one. Let me add this leaderboard bar. So we have two now. So it's very easy to, to add the slots on the several pages you have on your website. We already have a almost uh, more than 40 pages uh, ready to, to be used. So you can explore each one of those and add the ad spaces you think uh, it's good for your project. So once you add the, the slot here, let me save the changes. And later we can see them on the front end. So let me just edit a widget. I configured uh, our content widgets here to not display banner ads. So I'm going just to enable one here so we can use both square or white skyscraper. I'm going to use the squares not to break the design too much. So let me select square banners and save changes. Once the changes are saved, let me go back to my home page. We can see the results. Okay, before refreshing the page, uh, here's the content widget without banner ads. So when I refer refresh the page, we'll have one square banner, uh, two square banners appearing uh, on the side of the widgets. So that's how you activate the square or wide skyscraper space on your pages inside the widgets. The others will follow the same structure uh, directly to the page. The leaderboard I just added on the previous step, and this one was already there. The square, the square, the rectangle, large mobile banner ads. So simply, this is simply how to create the spaces. Let me go back here to the page editor. So you have plenty of pages to explore and add your own uh, spaces. So there's a lot of opportunity to display banner ads on your system. The second way to add the listing, the listing, the banner spaces is on the listing templates. So inside the listing detail page, you can add different banners as well. Let me add it to just one here. So we go here, content listings, and then listing templates. I believe I already have one that's our most common listing template we use here. Okay, so we have a leaderboard banner right below the main information, the header of the listing. So if I want to add one here on the sides, we can have the options, a square or a wide skyscraper. Let me pick up this one and add another one just for example here. Let's add a square. Where's... We can add uh, different options. So here uh, inside the listing template, the square banner widget, it also comes in this lot of uh, three pieces. Okay, just added the widgets. Let me save the changes. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. So let's go back to the... Let me see if this one is enabled with the banners. For this one, I have here the square banner and the wide skyscraper that we just added. So that's the way to include banner ads on the listing detail page. Uh, so these two banner ads will also be displayed on the listing detail on the mobile app. So it, because it follows the listing templates. So if you want our banners to be displayed on the apps, just go to the listing templates and add the slots you want to. Okay, next thing is how to add banners. So I'm going to go again to the content menu. Let's go to banners. So the, the process is very simple. Just add a banner. Then you can select the, the type that you want to use it, upload the file, uh, and do the settings. Uh, now on the settings part, this is very important. Uh, it's very flexible for the banners because the banner can be displayed by default on general pages. I mean, all pages of your websites uh, for uh, the category pages, uh, the results, etc. But it also can be displayed on, only on listing related pages like categories or searches uh, related to, to listings. The same for deal, events, classifieds, articles, or blog. So if you have a specific banner that you want to promote uh, for anything, uh, you can select exactly the module that this banner will be available. Or it can be global to uh, appear on all pages of your websites. And if you are using it for listings, for example, if you are your sponsor, for example, your advertiser uh, wants to promote uh, its banner just for a category, uh, a specific category. So they can also select the category. So uh, a company selling cars, they can display their banners just for the dealers, uh, for example. So uh, they can target their banners to a specific category of your website. And we mentioned about using external ads platforms uh, that we're going to mention a few in a minute. Uh, they like Google AdSense, uh, AdRow, among many others, they will provide a piece of code scripts that you simply can copy and paste here. So instead of uh, filling all the information, the image, the destination, uh, link, etc. It will all be done by here. It's just a matter of copy and paste. So probably most, uh, mostly you as a site owner will use the banners by scripts. So it's like Emerson, Google Ads, as I mentioned. The difference between the global banner uh, and the general pages banner, those two options right there under section. Yeah, global banner is in, uh, inside all pages. Uh, I'll double check this information, uh, but uh, in mostly uh, global banner is on all pages, no matter uh, if it's a category, if it's a search, uh, or if it's a module. Uh, while the general pages, we're talking about home page, uh, the FAQ, among a few others. But I'll double check the information and get the details uh, okay. in a minute. Yeah, we'll get that to you uh, by the end of the webinar. That's a good question, actually. I saw that and I couldn't remember the difference myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a lot of details. Uh, so basically, that's the, the two ways uh, to work with banners. They can upload their own image and mostly site owners will use uh, this, uh, this script for external scripts. I believe uh, <clears throat> You can enable this for uh, your own advertisers to use external scripts, but it's a more advanced option because uh, when you create your AdSense account, for example, you need to add uh, a file in the server. It, it can be done uh, through the dashboard, but you can, you, you must uh, use this uh, it's ADS text file an information that uh, verifies the source that you can display that type of banner. So 
you can do that for your advertisers, but it's not very recommended because we never uh, know what they will publish. Ad verification, our support team can help you if you have any difficulty with that, just to let you know. Okay, so we can also add uh, banners using the custom content widgets. It's similar to add an image uh, using the, the, the page editor. Uh, let me pull up very uh, quickly here, just to show you the example. So you go on the page editor, we're going to create a custom contents widgets. Let me just pull one here. It's be easy to show. We have the custom contents. So when you are editing the custom content widgets on the pencil here, you can just uh, add an image from your computer. Uh, upload the image, you can create then the, the link, etc. So uh, you can have a static banner uh, as it will be uh, a single image. It's not a, a slot, a space that uh, has competition that will rotate uh, the banners that you have in the system on each page loads. So this uh, is another way to add a static that never changes. It's always there uh, and there is no competition on the space. So it's another option you can use it. And uh, there is also, if you are using Google AdSense, for example, you can also place the scripts uh, inside the articles or on the blog module. So if you want to increase uh, the amount of uh, spaces, it's also another option using the same uh, strategy. Just go to the content area of the article or uh, from the blog and add the, the scripts between the text. Okay, so that's the, the settings that I mentioned. So we have global general pages. Uh, you can have the banner being displayed in individual modules uh, across all pages or to a specific category. Uh, the mobile app, let me uh, go back here just to show you that I mentioned that it's a setting, it's not a type of banner. So let me go back, content, banners. It will work for a square and large mobile. So let me edit this one that we already have on the system. So that's the setting. So I have this banner that uh, it's being displayed on both uh, web version and uh, responsive. But if I want to turn this banner just for the mobile app, I just click here. And that's it. I can still use the same uh, filter for it to be displayed on a specific category, I guess, uh, and the destination URL. So when they click on this uh, banner, they will go to the advertise with this page, for example. Okay, as uh, I was mentioning, we have some ads platform like Google AdSense is the most common one. So you can uh, earn some extra revenue using these platforms as site owners. So every time someone clicks on the ads displayed on your website, we're going to get a few cents uh, depending on the, the niche, etc. So you can use Google AdSense, you can use AdRow. Uh, Tabula and Autobrand are more content-based ads platform. So it's not just that uh, standard uh, banner. They will add more content like a widget for blog posts with information, with news, but it works the same way. They click, uh, the user clicks on the ad, you are going to get uh, a commission, uh, a part of the a revenue from the click. It's a pay-per-click uh, structure. It's very easy to use this and integrate with your e directory. Both uh, while AdRow and Google AdSense will be a banner uh, by scripts, Tabula and Autobrain must be used with the custom content widgets. So you can place these on specific areas of your website, uh, different from the banners. And as a best practices and tips, I can say uh, from the marketing standpoint, 
that uh, to, to use reduced number of slots of ad spaces on each page because it uh, it can pollute the the visual. So if the user sees less content and more uh, propaganda, it's not very friendly. So use it wisely uh, on the amount of uh, slots on each page. You can use uh, online software as uh, like canva.com to create the pieces. You can create the banners with the right size of each type of banner and can get great images from unsplash.com. Both are free to use. Uh, so you have everything you need to create great banners, just not, not just for you, but for your advertisers as well. And uh, as a last uh, tip, you can protect the listing detail page from the higher uh, level, for example, a diamond level listing to display banner ads. So if your advertiser wants just their information on the page, you can make a simple changes, a uh, simple setting selection on the back end uh, to avoid this uh, level of listing to display banner ads. So it's uh, a few things. And we have uh, available on our uh, plugins uh, store the geo-targeted banner ads plugin. So you can display banners based on users' locations. So uh, one person, one company uh, promoting <clears throat> its company, uh, just for Miami, for example, if you have a national or regional state director, for example, you uh, the advertiser from one city can select that his banner will be displayed just on that seat. It's very good for marketing purposes because you are protecting your budget, so you are not uh, wasting it away uh, with people that is not going to buy from, from you to see your ad. So it's uh, a good option to use on your website, depending on your projects. And they can uh, choose a specific location and you can select the radius that this... Uh, ads uh, this banner is going to be displayed based of course on the user's location and it so uh, this plugin also miles. works on on the ads miles or kilometers right just so yes the... yes miles yeah miles or kilometers okay so let me turn it over back to james so he can talk a little sure. bit about uh, the monetization yeah just to uh just to close it up here just some some marketing strategies um you know first on how to determine the price for the different banner ad placements um you could decide the price just sort of experiment uh set the price um the other thing you can do is look at what google might charge uh for similar type ads or placement and then just make an estimate if google's charging you know, X per click on their ads. Um, you can check Google and other websites uh, to see the values out there. Um, one other tip is using unsold banner ad spaces to promote your own site or your own your own events or whatever else, some articles, anything you have in there. Uh, you can create banners to just promote your own stuff if you haven't sold the zones yet. Um, you know, promoting signing up for a listing, et cetera, uh, with that. Uh, also, when you're building a media kit uh, to sort of sell the banners, um, you know, the page that shows the, you know, hey, you know, order a banner, sign up here, that kind of thing. Um, you can put in some analytics for the site when you build in the media kit um, to show the value of the banners to the clients. Um, there's some very simple tracking in there in terms of uh, banner impressions. Um, and you can offer uh, tiered ad packages or bundles, basically. Uh, essentially bundle a listing and give people a banner if they buy a premium listing, those type, that's basically the idea when you're creating these packages. And then you create these packages for when you go out elephant hunting, these really big packages that might include site-wide banners, mobile app banners, um, uh, those type of things uh, for that. Um, so I think that's uh, what we had today as far as that goes. And, and now should we open it up to questions, guys? Anything, anything else you want to add? I'll let me pull up the questions here. Why? We're waiting. Um, great. So, uh, oh, first we just had a couple ideas come in for uh, the next webinars. It looks like um, so. Uh, Johanna's put in some ideas, Matthias um, as well. So thanks for the ideas on future webinar topics. If anybody else has any ideas, we're always searching for ideas. Uh, so if you can give us ideas, that's really helpful for us um, in terms of what you'd like to hear us talk about. Um, so thanks for everybody that put in ideas. 
Um, another question, uh, can I add animated GIF files um, uh, for the banners? I, we actually talked just before the webinar about this issue. Um, there's right now you can you can upload GIFs, but the animation, unfortunately, because there's a library that converts the image, it, it strips out um, the animation. We're working on getting that fixed, um, and that will be available um, in the near future in terms of having uh, animated GIFs uh, for that. But at this point, you can only do regular GIFs, or um, if you put uh, if you do use an external banner app manager, then you could potentially serve an, an animated GIF uh, script banner type of thing. Um, one more question is, can I add banners anytime into the existing listing template, even though the template is already used in several listings? Yes, absolutely. So when you're configuring the templates or the pages, you're essentially configuring the zones. And then anytime you can upload new banners to, to be cycled through those zones. Um, a question from Kevin. Uh, oh, what's the difference between the general pages and the global banner? Are you able to try to track that down real quick while we're on here? Um, and if not, we, we can send everybody an info on that. We should know the answer to that. I suspect it has some, there's some legacy reason uh, from years ago why that, why those options are in there with some pre-built pages, but we'll see if we can get an answer here in a second. Um, another webinar topic, um, how to approach and sell your brand. Yeah, so thanks for the webinar suggestions again. Um, next question from Harry Berto. Can you explain how sponsors can have their banners on the front page of the directory? Um, yes, it's actually very simple. When the page editor, uh, you edit the widgets uh, for the home page, and then you just add a widget in for the banners and that that a banner zone and then when the banner zone is created um a sponsor can actually upload their own banner and, and buy a banner for that zone specifically um for that so i think we actually showed that i think this question came in before the uh the show and tell but if you have any if you have any trouble or questions about that don't hesitate to reach out to our support team essentially you edit the page put the zone in and then people can add individual banners into the zone um Next comment, uh, just so we are clear, there are banners that can be used for the native app and banners that can only be used uh, for desktop mobile browsers. Yes, um, Emerson showed you there's an option when, when uh, uploading the banner, is this banner served on the mobile apps or not? And so that's how you can differentiate this. Um, uh, next question, uh, do you sell a geo-targeted widget? Yes, we do. I think we just showed that. Um, if you go to our website, you can see that in um, uh, the options on edirectory.com, how to get that. It's off the navigation bar or just reach out to an account executive if, if you're interested in that plugin. Um, next question. Uh, this The question is for the stories feature on the app. We only want sponsor level to be able to show stories since uh, they would be paying more. Is there a way to do this? He's talking about the, the stories on the mobile app, I think, Emerson. Do you understand that question? Yeah. Are you able to answer that one? Uh, I believe that uh, only site owners can publish the stories. Uh, so he's asking for sponsors to, to publish. Okay. So I believe okay, that's yeah. a so matter of, uh, only the site um, Only the site owners can configure the stories. And so what you can do is say, create another listing level, like a, you know, a premium that includes story feature. And then they buy that premium listing package. And then uh, you, you just manually put in a story for those sponsors and put them in there um for that uh next question uh wondering if any new features for real estate listings um so we have uh the we have a new theme out this is out when earlier this year we put out just a real estate sort of focus that has the different fields um etc for that we are working on the real estate offering uh the real estate directory with real estate listings to make the search uh, more flexible and a bunch of other options as well. Um, I don't have an announcement about that today, but in the future we will have uh, uh, some some uh, an announcement about it as well as some new features available for uh, real estate sites. If you have anything specific that you're looking to add to the real estate um, uh, template, uh, let us know certainly, and uh, we'll see what's on the what's on the roadmap. Uh, 
let's see uh comment or make it available to a certain level that can use it in the stories to show their promos i think that was related to the previous question on the stories um a question from kim uh from a new eDirector user, when a subscriber picks a package, uh, for example, Diamond, that offers one or more banner ads, does the subscriber load everything or must my staff reach out to the subscriber and add the content? Um, so the, the subscriber can add the content themselves. The directory is set up for that and there's a moderation option um, for that, or you can have your staff do it either way on that. Um, but yeah, the option, the availability is there uh to to have the sponsors or the subscribers upload their own um next question how can i add a free plan option in the new version um yes we do have uh you can certainly add uh free uh free options there and it's just uh, uh when you're setting up the packages and plans um you just leave the price um to zero set that out and it'll be free um for that uh, so that's easy to do. If you have any trouble uh, setting up a free plan, just reach out to our support. We have chat on eDirectory.com and uh, they can show you exactly how to do that. Oh, and we got the answer on the general pages versus global banner uh, from Gabriel. He posted into the chat. Let me just read the answer here. Uh, if the general pages is selected, uh, the banner will be displayed on all pages that are not related to module URLs, uh, such as results page, detail page, advertise page, home page, contact us, the fact page, um, et cetera. Basically, the general pages, uh, it'll be shown on uh, non-database driven sort of, you know, not results pages and stuff like that. It's basically just on the pre-built custom pages in the website. And then um, the global banner is on everything. Um, uh, so that's the that's the answer there. Um, and that is a little bit of a uh, legacy feature there. I'll We'll talk about getting that interface sort of cleaned up because I, I know that's confusing. Um, next question uh, from Victoria. Will the website and app be available worldwide or is there any limitations? Um, yeah, no, the, the website is uh, anybody with the internet browser can certainly visit the website. Um, the apps are uploaded into the app stores. And uh, so I, I, I think if you upload an app into the American app store, people from other places potentially can download it. But some app stores are country based, um, like Apple has you know, a, a, a country you know app for like Brazil, for instance, you can go into the I, you know, the app store in Brazil and download the app there. So you could potentially upload the app into individual stores or just leave it in the US store, which I think is sort of the global one. I think that actually may be a setting um, when you upload a, a mobile app into the stores, like make it available uh, worldwide. Um, next question, do you have a template for terms of use and privacy policy? Um, we don't just because we're not uh, lawyers and, you know, depending on your jurisdiction and whatever else, uh, uh, it's just something we're not able to sort of give out. But there's a ton of those on the web, on the web out there. You can just like look for, you know, template of terms of use and privacy policy and download some and adjust it to your own. Or you can obviously talk to a lawyer um, yourself, but there's a lot out there and you can just upload those. Uh, next question from Justin, is there going to be a separate theme for real estate by itself um, as there uh, were medical restaurant wedding? Currently, the real estate theme is part of the default theme. Um, yeah, we don't have, uh, I guess, sort of the the, the theme uh, layout for real estate. But when you have the real estate selected, it has all the fields and everything uh, for real estate, like number of bedrooms and bathrooms. Um yeah, I guess we can look at um, putting together just some design options on real estate. I'll add that to the to the list there, um, Justin, as far as that goes. So thanks for the feedback there. Um, next question uh, uh, from Johannes. Can my directory get infected with viruses, malicious code when I insert custom code from other sites like banner scripts? Um, how can I scan? For such code in the directory, does Arc uh, Solutions uh, scan such code in my directory when it is shared on hosting? Um, yeah, so the, that's the thing. So the script banner, essentially it loads in script and that script uh, can decide. Um, so 
Yeah, we don't do any scanning. Um, I don't even know if there's scanners out there available for that. I think that even scanning it, like the whole nature of script is you're loading dynamic code in there. Um, so when you're, but when you're loading in these, you know, using the script banner, um, basically just use it from a reputable company. And so that basically people use the script banner option. They use that for like putting Google ads or ads in from one of these big ad networks. And those scripts are all totally fine. Um, if you're using some script, you don't really understand what it does or know it's from a, a verified person. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get anywhere near that um, as far as that goes. But yeah, we don't do any scanning on that. I don't even know if there's a way to really do that because you know whoever has it can make it change the script or what you know make the code on loading on the other end change that piece and etc so i just say make sure you're using it from a reputable ad network or ad provider most people use a script for yeah those big networks like google ads etc or if they're running multiple sites and they have a separate banner manager system that that outputs a little bit of script to include from their central banner manager that's what they use it for they're not just going out posting in ran random um, random scripts. Uh, Emerson posting a link to get legal documents into the chat. So um, there's an option there. Uh, next question, is there a cookies banner option? Um, I'm not sure what that means um, actually, as far as what a cookies banner. Do you have any idea on that, Emerson, what a cookies banner? Uh, so it's just the display of a uh, cook advertisement, cook, uh... It's a legal banner. We recommend use cookiebot.com, uh, which is there is. Oh, this is options, is this talking about the privacy policy? Is that the thing? Like the that's uh, where you check in to accept in all, all all cookies or not? Yeah, all cookies accepted and all of that. Yes, um, yes. that wouldn't be uh, through the banner manager or related to that. But we have a way to to make that accept. You know, the the privacy policy accept cookies option. Um, for that. I don't know if you're able to post that. We have a support article, I think, for that, don't we, Emerson? We'll post that in the chat here in a second um, for that. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. If you have, And if you want to learn how to do that, you can ask our support team as well. We have an article that shows you how to put one of those things about accepting cookies. Um, and uh, Johanna says, yes, scanning is possible. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I guess you can search for, for how to do that. Uh, if you are worried about the script banner or using some source of the script that you don't um, control uh, as well. Um, last call for questions. Any any last questions, anyone? Post them in. And um, Oh, and then the last thing is we will have a survey after the webinar. Please give us some feedback. Um, it is helpful for us to sort of understand and make these better each time. Okay, looks like no more questions. Uh, anything else? Um, Oh, uh, oh, a question here. I can't find the previous webinars. Um, if you go to the eDirectory blog, so go to eDirectory.com, scroll down all the way to the bottom, and there's a you'll see on the footer a link to the blog, and then we post all the recordings of, of previous webinars in the blog, so you'll be able to find those there. Um, and then uh, Harry Berto is looking for the cookies acceptance uh, thing by email. We'll send that to you by email. Okay, well, great. Um, so thanks everybody for joining us today uh, and we hope to see you back in two weeks. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.